Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and I'm going to talk about the 2020 film Blind, which I found streaming on Amazon Prime Video. So the film centralizes around an actress who recently had a botched eye surgery, which unfortunately led to her losing her sight. She is trying to cope with this, you know, via a support group, which has other members who have visual impairment, and it is run by Luke, who is a mute person who uses his phone to communicate, which is awesome. I love accessibility. So she has a very close friendship, it seems, with one of the other members of the support group, and Luke definitely has something for her, and he's trying to kind of feel out to see if she has the same feelings. You know how that awkward thing goes. While all of this is happening, of course, there is a very creepy looking killer who has a mask like a Ken doll. Just, he's around and we do get to see him quite a lot through the film. I'm going to leave it off here as it is spoiler free. I don't want to give anything away. What did I like about this film? I felt like the acting performances were pretty strong. I like that it's maybe at most a two location film and I thought that they used the locations as much as they could. It wasn't necessarily always to just one room. They did use different rooms of the woman's home. They went hiking at one point and then there's, you know, where the baddie lives, which they used quite a bit of that. Specifically with where he lives, there's a lot of the, the fairy lights, the Christmas lights, and a lot of jewel tones, which typically you associate with nice, calming, relaxing, happy stuff, which is completely the opposite of what his lair is, we find out. I thought that the cinematography was pretty. I thought that all the shots were really nice, very fluid. Everything meshed very, very well, and especially the soundtrack and... Uh, just the the score were great. I thought that they didn't use that overused sting so much, which is great. I love that for sure, especially because typically that's when they try to fake you out for a jump scare and there's nothing actually there, but your heart's still pounding. So very cool. I'm going to go into the bones I have to pick with this film. I am a visually impaired woman. So that is what drew me to a movie the main character being a visually impaired woman. I was really disappointed that in 2020, when this film came out, they are still relying on all of these stupid ass tropes that we've seen in films forever. It was made in 2020. You could have done your research. You could have talked to people that have varying degrees of visual impairment. You could have gone to resources like YouTube on here, there are a lot of visually impaired... I just, I'm so frustrated that Molly Burke. Molly Burke is an amazing, prolific YouTuber. She has so many videos about things that are not true about visual impairment, things you don't say to people with visual impairment, and like kind of a how-to guide of how you should act when you're referring to visually impaired people or interacting with visually impaired people. I totally understand that not everyone is going to have someone like me in their life that they can ask questions of, but you could have at least done just a tiny bit of research. The part in the film where the woman that says she was born without sight asked to feel the guy's face. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, are you serious? No one with visual impairment does that. Ever. Stop perpetuating this bullshit. Like, <sighs> my dryer, everyone. <sighs> Just so frustrating. And the there's a whole speech that they do in the group therapy session where he's saying, you're not disabled. You are disabled. I am disabled. I have a degree of disability because I have a degree of visual impairment. It doesn't define who I am. I don't create my identity around that, but it is a part of me and that's fine. I'm not ashamed of it. It's not something that I hide. I'll talk about it. You should never tell someone with a disability, that that's not you. You're, you're a superhero. 
also the thing about the senses, him saying, you know, you lose your sense of sight, all your other senses get heightened. That's not true. If you already have issues with your hearing and you lose your sight completely, your hearing isn't going to improve a thousand times percent. <laughs> a thousand times percent. I'm so smart. But you start to rely so much on your other senses that you really learn how to use them to navigate things. You know, you're more in tune with everything else in the world. It's not that those senses become so much better. It's just you really learn that you have to use them because you need to survive. And just, it's very frustrating, these types of films. I could see in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, maybe even in the early 2000s, we were really not sensitive to this community of people. And I feel we've come far enough that this shouldn't even be a conversation that we're having. And I'm really disappointed that we're having it right now. Do better. You need to do better. You need to do your research. If this is going to be literally the title of your film and literally the core of your film, do better. It's frustrating. It's really frustrating. Aside from that, I felt as though the pacing in this, not the best. It took, I think, 30 to 36 minutes, perhaps, to get to the real action. The first, you know, event in this film. There wasn't a lot of gore where they could have really spotlit the gore. My cat, everyone. <laughs> Sir, some privacy. There could have been so much that they could have done with it, and they just kind of, kind of missed the mark here. I know that I'm really passionate about this, but I, I feel like, you know, going back to the whole, my core issue here, r representation, guys, someone's got to say something. I don't know if they go into making films like this thinking that, well, blind people aren't going to watch this. Visually impaired people aren't going to watch this. It's not black and white. It's not sight or no sight. There's a ton of shades of gray in between. There are not a lot of people with vision loss that they have nothing at all. Like you could have, you know, the degree I have, you could have complete darkness. You could have light perception. And I don't feel like that was touched upon at all. And that's really sad because I specifically wanted to watch this movie because I thought I could identify with what this woman's going through. But I was so hung up on all these other things that I could not enjoy this movie. And that's really disappointing and really sad. I don't know. Have you guys seen this movie? What are your thoughts on this movie? As I said, I watched it streaming on Amazon Prime. Uh, leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram, and now TikTok at Reanimator. You can find my solo as well as reviews with the groom on... My dog is barking. <laughs> on iTunes in podcast form. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. And I hope that everyone's doing well and staying well. See you later, guys. What did I like about this movie? Look at these cat legs for a second. He's stretching. What is this cat? Beautiful cat pants. Beautiful cat pants. So, Dobby, I don't know if there's so much that they're dislikes. I just got licked. Thank you, sir. They're, just stop it. Just stop and do your homework. <laughs> He's so cute. Welcome to Randomator Review. Ah, Dobby! <laughs> Nasty boy. <laughs>